Hi, my name is Dan Abrams, and I'm a writer-producer. And as a producer, I'm enabled to see certain scripts for plays and movies before they become plays and movies, before they're seen by the general public. And one of them came across my desk today, and I can't in good conscience not share it with the world. Because A, it's incredible. It's the best play I've actually seen since, since this author's previous work, The Agony and the Ecstasy of Steve Jobs. Um, and B, it contains shocking, shocking things that we didn't know about an iconic and beloved American company. Now, it's called The Magic Kingdom. It's by Mike Daisy, who you may know from The Agony and the Ecstasy of Steve Jobs. Um, and Mike traveled to Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, and gave a firsthand account of what he saw there. And I got to tell you, I was shocked. I was at Disney World just last month. I had a fantastic time, and I had no idea that this is what's, what was really going on. And I got to tell you, I was planning to go back immediately, possibly as soon as next month, and I, don't, I can't imagine I'll ever go back to Disney World again because of how horrible the treatment is. So here are three excerpts from The Magic Kingdom by Mike Daisy. This first excerpt is what Mr. Daisy encountered as he uh, approached the park gates. Now, bear with me. I'm nowhere near as good an actor as Mr. Daisy is, but I will try to do this justice. Um, the system of entering the park was clearly designed to menace the entrant. Individuals were subjected to order, kept in line by the gaze of angry security guards. I would later find out that these were Israeli-trained army officers, brandishing M16s and Uzi submachine guns. Order was maintained at all costs. Each individual, one by one, had their identification papers scanned both by a machine and a human eye. This ensured that no one entered the park except on Disney's terms. When I finally gained admittance, what I saw shocked me. Families, mostly with children, some as young as three, were being subjected to the same brutal, orderly system as at the front gates. After a two-hour ordeal in line, these children were allowed just two minutes on a thrill ride. That is, a ride as thrilling as a 50-year-old ride can be. Many were crying. Some simply stood in place and refused to move, no matter how much their parents begged. The true misbehaviors were pulled off by security guards, never to be seen again. I later found out from a Disney cast member that these misbehaviors were taken to the catacombs of Disney and shot by the Israeli guards. Events like this happened at least a dozen times a day, more around Christmas and school holidays. This next excerpt describes what Mr. Daisy saw when he came to one of the park's most popular rides. The writhing pile of mangled bodies was heaped outside the exit to Space Mountain. These bodies belied just what a death trap the ride was. Nearly every single child who exited the ride experienced a life-altering trauma. Blunt head injuries, amputated hands, bleeding from the eyeballs. What else could you expect from a machine that whizzed unsecured passengers around an enclosed area at nearly 700 miles an hour, all in complete darkness? The most shocking thing about it was that these families were paying for the privilege. I warn you, this final excerpt is the scariest and the most disturbing, and if you have young children, you should take them away right now. They should not watch this. My visit to Epcot Center was cut short by the most horrible event I experienced. At 3.02 in the afternoon, Florida was hit by a magnitude 9 earthquake. This caused Splash Mountain to form a tsunami over two miles high which crashed into the park, killing over 60,000 visitors. Perhaps Disney couldn't have prevented this, but the next part could have been averted with more planning. In their unwavering support for nuclear power, which was cheap and helped them make a tiny profit, the Disney Corporation had designed the entire resort around a nuclear reactor inside the Epcot Ball. Damaged by the earthquake and left without power by the tsunami, the reactor melted down, 
the plutonium rods were exposed to the air and radiation spilled over, over southern Florida, transforming everyone within 50 miles into terrible mutants, mostly without, mostly without superpowers, and releasing a Godzilla monster. Now, I love Disney as much as the next man, but this company has just put us at risk too much. Um, Mike Daisy has done the world a favor and exposed the company for what it really is. Um, and he's done so as a piece of powerful drama, which, as we all know, is the best way to do investigative reporting. Um, so I apologize to Mr. Daisy if I trampled on his copyright, but um, please go see his play when it comes out. And if you are like me, share this message on Facebook and Twitter, because it's really, really, really important that everyone see how bad the Disney Corporation is and how smart and honest and brave that Mr. Daisy is. Um, now, I'm nowhere near as smart and honest and brave as him, but uh, uh, if after you've seen his new play, The Magic Kingdom, you still have time, please look at the movie I'm making. It's just a piece of escapist entertainment. Um, uh, it's called False Prophet. You can find it uh, at falseprofitthemovie.com. Um, but much more importantly than that, please we must get the Disney Corporation and make Mike Daisy our king. Thank you.